Special Representative of the United Nations Secretary General and the CEO of Sustainable Energy for All, Excellency Mary Robinson, senior officials and members of the Diplomatic Corps, distinguished delegates, ladies and gentlemen. First, allow me to welcome you all to Rwanda. We are happy to host you and thank you for choosing our country as the host of this year's forum. And we are happy to have it as the first forum in Africa. Over the past decade, significant progress has been achieved toward the seventh sustainable development goal on affordable and clean energy for all. Nevertheless, the COVID pandemic has reversed many of the gains. Today, in Africa, more than half a billion people still do not have access to electricity. This energy crisis coincides with the threat of climate change, to which our continent is especially vulnerable. Switching to renewable energy is crucial. That is why creating an enabling environment to attract investment in a sustainable energy is so important. Allow me to elaborate on three ways in which this can be accomplished on our continent. First, expanding the use of off-grid technologies and standalone systems can help bring power to rural communities in Africa more quickly. Second, going forward, we need to integrate industrial policy with a sustainable energy policy. We need to, uh, to plan now to be able to power Africa's future industries sustainably, but without slowing down our development. The data centers that need to be built in Africa to support the growth of information technology services are one example. Vaccine manufacturing is set to grow in Africa in the coming years. We can work to make the sector green right from the outset. Lastly, strong public energy utilities are central to access and affordability. They need to be professionally managed and financially viable. By integrating sustainable energy in pandemic recovery plans, 
we can accelerate the transition to clean power. But the transition must be just and equitable. This means it should align with Africa's development priorities and aspirations to ensure no one is left behind. At the same time, there needs to be increased financing to developing countries to support climate adaptation in line with international agreements. Africa cannot carry the burden alone, especially given that its emissions did not create the climate emergency. However, Africa However, Africa will be part of the solution. For example, we will contribute through the Africa Center of Excellence for Sustainable Cooling and Cold Chain launched in 2020 by the governments of Rwanda and the United Kingdom together with the United Nations Environment Program. This initiative is a concrete effort to help achieve the goals of the Kigali Amendment to the Montreal Protocol on phasing out hydrofluorocarbons. In addition to delivering financial security to farmers, this center will respond to the growing need for medical cold chains to store vaccines and medicines. We have a shared responsibility to ensure that our actions match our ambitions. The diverse group of stakeholders uh, attending this forum is a demonstration of the level of partnership required to get the job done for our communities and our planet. I wish you productive discussions in the coming days. Once again, thank you for gathering in our country, and I hope you will all feel at home during your stay here. I thank you for your kind attention.